Now that spring, I guess you could say the transfer portal is now closed, everybody's dropping their top 25 post-spring, right? You get the spring games over. You get the portal activity, for the most part, over because all of the big chips have fallen. And since grad transfers now cannot leave at will or when they feel like it, they have to abide by the actual windows put in place. That window's closed. So everybody that's going to be in the portal is in the portal. And the next set of movement portal wise we'll see will be in December. So because of that, our friends over there at Fox sports, two guys that I really enjoy their content. You've got Joe Clad as well as RJ young drop their list and where Oklahoma landed on them in a way it makes sense, but it's the same narrative. Everybody is saying, and I'm going to be honest. I kind of love it. I'm actually happy that everybody's saying this. So let's jump into their list and I'll explain to you all in just a moment kind of what I mean. But before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. All right. So let's look at these lists and talk about why I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that these positions are really good for the Sooners. All right. You see the list here. Joe Klatt drops his spring, post-spring top 25. RJ Young dropped his as well. And I'm going to play what Joe said just so you all can hear this for yourselves. Then you can better understand why I'm like, all right, this narrative makes sense. We'll play it in a moment, but I want to look at it. So right now you see Oklahoma at 17 on Klatt's and you see for RJ, it's 14, which is about where Oklahoma was last year, middle of the pack. And for the most part, Oklahoma is on both lists kind of at the bottom of the teams that people felt like should be, you know, either playoff bound or New Year's Six Bowl bound. Kind of like they were last year, right? In the New Year's Six Bowl, we didn't make one. We ended up in the Alamo Bowl specifically because we were the last of the top 10 and 2 teams out there. And, you know, I guess, right? But... There's reasons why people said that. And so let's listen to Clatt real quick. I want you to hear what he says specifically as to why Oklahoma is 17, because it's basically the same thing that RJ Young said. Oklahoma, they're at 17. By the way, the reason they're at 17, and I, and I wanted to just pause on this for a moment, their schedule is brutal. I would have had them higher because of all the things that I mentioned, but their schedule is brutal. Four of my top 10 teams that you'll see coming up, they play them. Six of my top 16 teams, they play them. And they do that all in the last nine games. Tennessee, Texas, Ole Miss there. At Missouri, Bama, LSU. Brutal. It's a brutal schedule. It's one of, if not the toughest schedule in the country. Them, Michigan, those two schedules are really difficult. Not to mention they've got games at Auburn, which I think is going to be an improved team. That's a team that I also considered in the top 25. Home against South Carolina, again, a team that I considered in the in the top 25. And that's a game that you know Shane Beamer is going to be all jacked up about, being back at OU, which is where he came from. So OU's got a All right, so you heard that. The schedule is brutal. Oklahoma has the hardest schedule in the nation. It's going to be tough for Oklahoma. The schedule is this. The schedule is that. And history has told us it's probably a good thing for us, right? And I say that because not because it's good to have the hardest schedule, but there's a very good chance that this schedule is not going to be the hardest everybody's seen, right? And there's a very good chance that the way these, these rankings are set, a lot of these teams won't be where they are. Now, I think the ones that I've made sense for me, Ole Miss has been killing it in the portal every year, like the last three years. And last year, that historical season. So, I mean, it seemed like it's translated, but they couldn't get past the big boys, which is the tradition of an Ole Miss and a Lane Kiffin out there. That's the same thing that you see from like a Penn State, who every year recruits well, plays good defense, and they just can't get over the Michigan-Ohio State hump. Tradition as old as the game itself. But for Oklahoma... With everybody really picking Tennessee over Oklahoma, and now the Tennessee piece, Clapp mentioned, and RJ kind of mentioned this as well, Tennessee may have the number one draft pick on the defensive line, right? Their their edge is absurd. They've got good player there, but there's a lot of questions everywhere else for them. And, of course, Nico is the quarterback. Nico Iyamaliava, 
The question you got to ask yourself is, will Nico be what everybody expects? Because we haven't really seen much of him, right? You did see him play against Iowa, which Iowa here at 18 and 24 in Klatz. The funny thing with the Iowa piece is, as a longstanding member of the SEC, and I can say this outside of a lot of my Sooner fans, we, you know, a lot of my Sooner fans are new, and y'all know that if you've been around for long enough, you know that my team is Oklahoma, and Tennessee has always been my SEC team. Now my alliance has shifted, has to shift more towards Oklahoma because, you know, we're in the same conference, but I digress. I've never understood the Big Ten love when it comes to the Big Ten West, right? Like everybody, like, Clack gave Nebraska the 22 spot because he thinks their defense was really good last season and it should translate next year. Nebraska played teams in the Big Ten West. They got cooked by Colorado, who we're still questioning. Iowa as well. Iowa had a really good defense last season until they met Nico and they gave up 35 points. My point with these West teams is that it's like a lot of their stats are inflated. Penn State playing a lot of Big Ten West teams. The Big Ten inflates their team's defensive numbers because they're playing really bad teams. Right now, Ohio State defensively is really good. And I get why everybody's giving Ohio State that number one spot. Because Missouri was one of the more powerful offenses in college football last year, and they struggled moving the ball against Ohio State, and Ohio State didn't have a quarterback. Right? That game was a snooze fest, all defense, really bad offenses, and Ohio State's defense was really showing out. Like, showing out, right? Missouri had everybody. Ohio State didn't. Notice the difference there, right? But I like Oklahoma in the middle because history has told us that a lot of this stuff's not going to fall the way you think. I, the Texas piece, got to throw a little shade at my, my my bitter rival, but I get why everybody's giving Texas love. Quinn is coming back, and everyone liked the way Arch Manning looked in the spring game. The problem for Texas is, statistically and historically, Quinn Ears probably won't play the entire season. He hasn't so far. Why should I believe he will? And then when Arch comes in, the question is, will he be able to keep them going? Don't know. We'll have to see. The good thing for them is they brought back their offensive line. But I still haven't seen anything about Quinn that makes me feel like he's a number one draft pick. Everybody's giving him that, but I haven't seen it yet. Georgia and Oregon should be fine. They bring back a lot of players on both both teams. And Oregon got themselves our old quarterback and Dylan Gabriel with a young quarterback right behind him and Dante Moore. But for Oklahoma, I like that them being in the middle of the pack because... Now all they got to do is continue to prove and keep moving up. Because Clatt had his in quadrants where, you know, Oklahoma is sitting in the top, is in the second, is in, the, I think, the third quadrant for him. The last team in the third quadrant, which included 11 to 17. 18 to 25 was the next one. So they're at the end of his, which Oklahoma always is. We just got to prove ourselves. We have our questions. We've answered a lot of them but we still got to approve them on the field. And so I'm fine with it. Hop in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel. I know a lot of you were upset. A lot of you have, you know, voiced your displeasure with some of these lists. And I get it. I 100% get it. So what I'm going to do is wait and see and not be mad about it. If you made it this far, you like the content, please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Love for y'all to join this family of college football fans. We talk OU football, SEC football, and college football in general. Having a blast doing it. All right, you know we're going live. Check it out. Pull up. Love to see you all there. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Peace.